In this and the next video, I'm going to go through what network protocols are and focusing now at three particular very high profile protocols, TCP, UDP and IP. But before I do, let's just define what a protocol is. So a protocol for a network is a set of rules that allow two devices to communicate with each other. So both parts underlined are really important. Rules which enable communication. And it's similar, just to give an analogy, it's similar to how when people speak different languages, they obviously can't always communicate in the same language. So we might use a third language as a sort of um, common language to use. So for example, English is usually used. If you go abroad, somebody from Italy, somebody from Spain might speak to each other in English just to allow them to communicate. It's a similar idea of protocols in that we must have this agreed standard to enable devices to communicate, right? For example, the device on the left is made by Apple, the device on the right is made by Huawei, both different companies designed in different countries using different technology, both would not be able to communicate with each other unless there were sets of rules which both agreed to. And that is the whole point of protocols. And just so you know, and we'll talk about it later, protocols are usually developed in layers. So when you design a protocol, you'll give it a layer and a layer performs a particular function in communication. So one layer does one job, another layer does another job. They each are quite specialized. Okay, so there are lots of protocols, each of which is in a layer and a layer does a very particular job. So as we'll go through in the next video in particular, there are quite a few protocols which work at the different layers, but usually only one protocol will work at any given layer. So you might have four protocols working at once, but only one in each layer, usually. Okay, but we'll come back to that concept a bit later. For now, let me give you a, a term which is often confused. If you see TCP slash IP written down, we'll, we'll go through both those later because TCP and IP are both protocols. But when you see TCP slash IP, actually, this is referring to something called the Internet Protocol Suite. Now, this is a big, big group of protocols. Okay, so TCP and IP are two protocols, which you must know about, but when it's TCP slash IP, this is basically the big group of protocols that the internet uses. So it's called a protocol stack, a big group of protocols working together. Okay, so TCP IP does not just refer to these two, there are other protocols as well. And TCP IP uses four layers. Remember I said that a layer does a very particular job, We've got application, we've got transport, we've got network, and we've got link. Okay, those names vary a little bit. So if you've been taught different names, that's not a big problem. So the way this works is when you want to send data, you start off in the application layer. So for protocol working the application layer, we'll start off this process and it'll get passed down through the layers until it leaves the link layer. So they work one by one going top to bottom when you are sending data. Now the way things works over the way things work over networks is the data being sent is broken into individual packets. So for example, hello as a message wouldn't get sent in one go. It would get broken down in this protocol stack into what we call packets. So a packet is a very small amount of data and the packets are what are sent after the link layer. So it gets broken down into smaller packets. This is because it's much more efficient to send smaller items at once. Sending a big block in one go would really clog up the network. Break it down into small packets makes things faster. So that's sending data. To receive data, it's the opposite. So the data comes in at the link layer, goes up to network to transport to application, and the packets get put back together so you can view the message. That is how networks work in a quick overview. Now let's talk about our first big protocol, which is TCP. So TCP stands for Transmission Control Protocol. So transmission is about sending things somewhere else, which does describe what it does pretty much. So TCP works at the transport layer. So often that T in TCP gets mixed up so it's at the transport layer, but the T stands for transmission. So you've got to just learn that fact. Okay, so what TCP does 
is it will receive data from the application layer when you are sending data at least, and it will split it into packets. So TCP is what is actually breaking down hello in this example into packets. Okay, so it breaks into packets and we'll then pass it on to the next layer. When data is received, it will take packets and reassemble them together. So it will take the packets and put it back to the original message when data is received. Okay, so really it's all about breaking things down and building them up afterwards. But that's not the whole thing it does. What's really important is when TCP is working, when it sends a packet, it will wait for an acknowledgement. So an acknowledgement is a message saying the packet has been received. So when a message arrives, the computer sends a message called the acknowledgement to say it has received the packet. If the computer doesn't get a acknowledgement back, it assumes the packet has got lost or there's been an error or there has been an issue. And so the packet will get retransmitted. So in, in summary, when a packet doesn't arrive, it gets sent again, is the key message. So therefore, this whole mechanism provides error checking and correction. When stuff is sent over a network, over the internet, lots and lots of stuff can go wrong. Things go wrong all the time, packets get lost, packets get deleted, packets get corrupted. This whole point about sending acknowledgements is meant to make sure if there is an issue, the packet gets resent until it all arrives perfectly fine. Now that's important because the next protocol called UDP doesn't do this at all. So UDP also works with a transport layer, but it stands for user datagram protocol. Also written sometimes as user data protocol, but user datagram protocol. Now that tells you nothing about what it does, but what you must know is UDP is an alternative to TCP. So you won't have both. Okay, both do the same job, they allow packets to get transmitted, but UDP is different because it does not retransmit packets. So TCP will constantly make sure every packet arrives. UDP does not care. It will send a packet. If it doesn't arrive, it doesn't care. It won't check. So there are no acknowledgements. It just sends it and forgets about it. Now, this might seem stupid, but actually this makes it quicker than TCP. Because TCP is constantly checking and constantly resending stuff, it's slower than UDP. So UDP just sends stuff, so it's quick, but is unreliable. If a packet gets lost or deleted or corrupted, it's gone, it won't ever come back. So UDP is often used for things like live gaming. So if you're gaming online, you don't really care about things being perfect. If you lose a couple of frames or it glitches a little bit, that's better than it being perfect, but very, very laggy. It'll be very laggy potentially because TCP is constantly resending packets. UDP is just as it happens much quicker. It's also used for things like Zoom calls and things like live streams, things which need to happen with no delay because, you see, uh, because TCP can cause delays. But TCP must be used if you need all the data. So most websites and most documents and emails and so on will use TCP because errors aren't really acceptable. And the third and final protocol I want to cover is not connected to TCP and UDP, so they work together. This is because IP works of a network layer, so it's a separate protocol to TCP or UDP, which are at the transport layer. So IP stands for Internet Protocol. You would have heard of IP addresses, and that's really what IP does. So IP makes sure there is an address given to the packet, and it needs to put in both the source and the destination IP address. So the source IP address is your computer, the destination IP address is where you're sending the packet to. Okay, and that's what it does when it's sending stuff. When it's receiving stuff, all it will do is take the packet from the link layer and remove the IP address because they're not really needed anymore. Okay, so when it's sending data, it adds addresses. When it receives data, it removes the addresses because they're not needed. We'll talk more about what IP addresses are in a future video, but just roughly, an IP address tells 
the computer roughly where the device is. And so the IP address is used to forward packets to the correct place. Use, well, via a router. Okay, so IP is what a router will use to make sure packets get sent to the correct place because the router will look at the IP address and use it to figure out where to send the packet.